everyone and welcome to Paula's Soapbox. I'm here with a very special guest. I'm sure many of you will remember her for the role that she originated on As the World Turns, Rosanna Cabot. She's here today to talk about that as well as her current projects. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the show Yvonne Perry. Hello. Hello. Thank you for coming. I know you're very busy, so I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. So, um, As the World Turns, was that your uh, first major role? Probably, yes. I did, I did work on a show called Candid Camera yeah. for about a year mm -hmm. before I got on As the World Turns. Uh, I traveled around tricking people, basically, yeah. uh, on the East Coast improv team with them. So, it certainly wasn't the first time I'd gotten a job on camera, but uh, I guess you would call it a big break. Yeah. 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 So what was that like working on a soap? Was that different than? It's funny because I didn't, I didn't ever imagine that that's where I would end up, but uh, I loved it. Yeah. I loved it because I felt like every day I went to work and I was learning something new. Right. It, it's such a fast-paced uh, business mm -hmm. and um, certainly more fast-paced than anything I've done before or since. Mm -hmm. And I really liked that you had to be smart and be on your toes and if and there were people that couldn't couldn't keep up and they didn't last very long so so it's kind of like theater in a way except except no rehearsal except well you know you have it's not live so yeah yeah yeah, yeah but but you know I was I was young at the time and um, I was in the younger storylines mm -hmm. so what that meant was we usually went last which means they would tape our scenes last mm -hmm. and uh, the crew, the union would make them go on break at 8.30 at night. So, I hope this isn't too technical, but we would have to get out of there by 8.30 at night. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually we would do all of our scenes at the same time. So say Rosanna was in the Snyder Kitchen and at the Snyder Pond in that episode. So we would be the last two sets that they would tape on that day. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we wouldn't get in front of the cameras until um, you know 7.30 at night. So we would have one hour to do all of our scenes, mm -hmm. and um, and we would we would do what was called straight to tape, which means no rehearsal. No rehearsal and no. Our camera blocking, and we would tape it, and it would go on the air. So yeah, I got used to working really, really fast. Yeah, and a lot of dialogue too, I would imagine. At, after a while, not at first. Not at I first. Watching it when I first showed up, all I did was blink a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I remember you on that show, so I, the, the big Rosanna and Mike, you know, right. you were with uh, Sean Christian, who of course is on Days of Our Lives now. Do That's you true. Do you still keep in touch with any of your former castmates? Oh, I love Facebook for that. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm kind of a, a junkie in the way that, I remember when I was on the show, I, I used to read all of the magazines. I mean, all of them. I would read them cover to cover. Yeah. I really became a student. Mm -hmm. I would say, and so um, I was very into the social aspect of knowing who everybody was mm -hmm. and what show they were on and what character they played, and then when I would meet them at events and things, I would have to know their real name. Mm -hmm. Now that at Facebook, it just feeds into someone who is like me, who just likes us. So, so yeah. yes, the answer to your question is I keep in touch with um, Martha Byrne. I've seen her several times. Mm -hmm. Of course, she played Lily and Kelly Minahan and um, Greg Watkins, who played Evan, and... Um, it's weird when you're actually, my experience has been that when you're actually on a show, you're so busy working mm -hmm. that you don't have time to sort of nurture friendships. Yeah. Um, but when you go off a show, you often reach out to, to people. So it's weird. Most of the people that I keep in touch with are not actually on a show, per se, right now. Right. Yeah. Doug Mills, remember him? He played Hutch. Hutch, uh, yes. When I first came on, yeah, yeah. I kept in touch with him on, uh, via Facebook. So, um, But people like Martha Byrne and Colleen Zhang, mm -hmm. I actually see because they are actively involved in different web series. As right. Well. Gotham so, and, um, of course, you were doing Empire as well as Super Knocked Up, right? Um, exactly. I've done Empire, three seasons of Empire. Yeah. Um, and then Super Knocked Up. Yeah. Uh, did you ever have any weird fan encounters while you were doing As the World Turns? Because I know everyone's got a story about weird <laughs> fan encounters, either male or... <laughs> it's so long ago. You know, the funniest thing to this day is I feel like whenever I don't have any makeup on... Mm -hmm. that's, that's when you run into a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I think my theory is that when you're, when you're sort of done, when you're made up, you... Um, 
intimidates people. So yeah. They feel like they can't talk to you, but then if you don't, if you look, you know, crappy. Yeah. They figure, ah, they, they won't mind. Yeah. So, <laughs> when I was on the soap, I remember that Walmart's a dangerous place to go. Yeah. Well, that. <laughs> I'm getting distracted. My dog is behind me throwing a ball, and <laughs> he's lost my it. My dog just came in too. And I have a cat right over here. Oh. <laughs> and then my daughter just snuck in and brought me a clementine. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll have you know. Ready, ready to eat. You don't have to peel it. Yeah. I'll wait. I'll wait till we're done. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that seems like that's how it is, like, in normal everyday life. If you look really bad or you're sick or something, you always run into somebody you know. So I can imagine... Well, you're trying to be like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Super Knocked Up. I've, I've watched the series. I'm all caught up on it. Um, I thought it was clever. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm surprised, actually, that no one has come up with that concept before. But yeah. um, for people who don't know, just kind of explain your character and what the show's about, that sort of thing. Well, I knew Jeff, who is the writer and the director. Mm -hmm. and, um, he actually sent me the script a couple of years ago. Uh, he wrote it as a feature film. Mm -hmm. And I really thought it was very clever. Mm -hmm. And I liked it. I read a lot of scripts, and I don't often... I'm not often really that intrigued by it, but mm -hmm. uh, I thought there were some really funny moments in it, and I, I like doing funny stuff. Yeah. So, um, we talked about it, and he decided that for uh, financial reasons, that he thought he would start producing it episodically mm -hmm. and putting it online. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a good idea. And yeah. So, um, and so that's how I ended up on the web series. Mm -hmm. Asked me to play the superhero. So it's about a superhero, a male, a good guy, and he has a one night stand with a super villain who's a girl and she's a bad guy and she ends up getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so what happens when two superheroes have a baby, especially if they're on the wrong sides? Yeah. Um, and I play the mother of the superhero, the, the male. Mm -hmm. And um, it's fun. I, I don't know that we've gotten to the point yet in the series where you learn more about my character. But she's got some. She's got some tricks up her sleeve. Oh, that'll be interesting. So, yeah. <laughs> so when can we expect new episodes? Because I'm all caught up, and now I want to know what happens. And <laughs> isn't that the magic question? Yeah. <laughs> I I know that last year we filmed at least up through episode four, three episode four, mm -hmm. and I haven't seen it yet myself. Yeah. yeah. But I know we filmed it, so I think it's just a matter of of uh, the final edit and the the sound. Mm-hmm finalized and all that stuff so but I, I stopped asking you stopped Jeff. asking I probably need to bug Jeff a little bit and ask him <laughs> he would be the guy that knows I'm just an actor I show right. up to save my life you're the last one to know so right. <laughs> yeah well that seemed like a really fun show you know like I said I think that the concept was great you know I'm surprised that no one's ever come up with that before because it just seems so obvious you know what happens when right. a superhero has a one not stand and results in a, a baby with his right. arch nemesis. So, right. but it's a fun show and I hope people check it out. So, I hope so too. I think Jeff really does a lot of work marketing it. Yeah. Um, travels all over the country and goes to Comic Cons and things like that. And so I know that they've, you know, all the web series that I've been on, and uh, this is the third Super Knocked Up. Mm -hmm. um, I, did, I did a series called Escape as well. Um, and, uh, this one's definitely gotten the most clicks, I guess you'd say. Yeah. But um, but he's a little slow on letting episodes out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, the production end is always difficult. You know, it's, it's new media entertainment is a very experimental art form, and there's yeah. a lot of people into it, and it's not regulated by the unions yet. Mm -hmm. So you find a lot of really good actors willing to kind of for free. Mm -hmm. um, donate their time toward projects that they are interested in, mm -hmm. um, and they won't get in trouble because nobody's getting paid. Right. Um, but because nobody's getting paid, sometimes it becomes difficult mm -hmm. to, you know, lighting or really good sound or, you know, like like I said, maybe get that final edit in. Mm -hmm. I, I think. I imagine that would be hard. And again, I don't know a ton about the production end. <laughs> yeah. Well, these web series, you know, the online web series, they're just taking off. You know, there's a new one popping up every day. Um, I'm on Twitter, and, of course, a lot of people come to me, and, and they're like, well, do you want to promote, help me promote my show? And I'm like, I've never heard of that one. I'm going to have to watch it before 
you know, but yeah, there's, there's, it seems like there's a new one every day, but, uh, it's not often that I find, better and better. It, yes, yes, they are a better quality, uh, better actors, better writing, that sort of thing, um, but yeah, I'm, uh, you know, there's some that are really bad, and then there's some that are really good, but I don't help promote the ones that I think are bad, because, right. you know, well, thanks. so, <laughs> that should tell you something about what I thought about the show, so, but yeah, I, I thought it was really good, but it was, it was odd, because, um, Libby, the publicist, had contacted me through Twitter, and she was like, would you like to maybe set up some interviews with the cast of Super Knocked Up? And I'm like, what's well, Super Knocked Up? You know, knowing nothing <laughs> about the show, you know, it was like, so I had was to check it, it out fun? first, and I was like, oh, Super Knocked Up Superheroes, yeah. okay, I get it. Yeah. Um, but, um, let's see. So how is that different about the web series? How is that a different, I think you kind of explained a little bit about um, how it's different than some of the other things that you've done as far as not getting paid and that sort of thing. But the schedule, how is that? Is that how is that different? Is it fast paced or? Um, not, not nearly fast paced enough for me. Oh, so you <laughs> like. part of the problem. I'm really used to showing up, doing my thing, getting it done, getting out. Right. And so when you're working with younger directors or producers or writers, mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, they're not they're not as experienced. So I guess that that would probably be one of my complaints. Just because I'm so busy, I don't have a lot of time to right. wait around, especially if, you know, so. Right. But, but, you know, I find that once you talk with the people you're working with, and this is, this is about anything. This is, this could be the makeup and hair people if they, if you're lucky enough to have someone doing mm -hmm. makeup and hair, or, or the wardrobe people, or the lighting guys, or the sound guys, or the people doing the scheduling. If you explain to them what your expectations are, they'll do really, they'll really try hard to meet them. It's mm -hmm. just that they're learning mm -hmm. um, because it's such a young form. Uh, web series, there tend to be a lot of young people, actually, who have the time to experiment. And right. And so, um, then you get us older, I'm an older person now, <laughs> and I'm, you know, showing up going, chop, chop, chop. So, uh, you know, I guess, I guess we can be a little rough, but I know that it certainly helped, you know, when I worked on Empire, it was a little rough the first season, and then, and then the production values just got better, and the scheduling got tighter mm -hmm. as we went on, and then by the time we did our third season, Fritz Breckeller was on as the um, as one as the line producer, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. I mean, that shoot was was I think six days we shot, uh, but ended up being about a two hour long, you know, episodes worth. Mm -hmm. But it was like a feature film in six days. And yeah. we did it, and it was great, and it was tons of fun, and of course there were lots of soap vests on that. Yeah. Um, you know, Lauren Hill, Lauren, Lauren Martin, mm -hmm. who was on As the World Turns after I left. Yeah. What was the name of her character? Uh, I'm not sure I remember her. Bonnie? Did she play Bonnie? No. I watch the show off and on, so there's, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. I sort I of switch. She's on, you know. <laughs> she was great. She's my roommate, and you know, of course, um, Ellen Dolan was in. Right, he played Margo. Uh, helped her produce it. Mm -hmm. that, and so it was so much fun. Yeah. To shoot that. Yeah, I noticed. I haven't. Directing. Mm -hmm. So anyway. I haven't seen all of that series, but just looking at the cast list, I was amazed. I was like, yeah, wow, I know this. Yeah. He plays my lesbian lover. It's yeah. Really <laughs> but that was shot down in the New York area. You know, Super Knocked Up is, is up in the Capitol District, so we're a couple hours north of New York. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, not so many seasoned people in it. But that's great, too. I mm -hmm. really like being around young people who are enthusiastic. In fact, some of the superheroes in Super Knocked Up are, are um, students of mine mm -hmm. who I taught in college. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, yeah, I was going to that I taught in. So yeah. it's fun to it's fun when you get to meet a student in an academic environment and then a couple months or a couple years later you show up and you're working with them. Yeah. That's really great. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that anyway about your teaching cuz I I wasn't aware that you were teaching now. So how did you start doing that? How, was that something that you always wanted to try to do or No, no. I don't I don't know. Um I know that I did some coaching mm -hmm. when I was in New York 
when I was still on the soap, I would help people with their screen tests. Mm -hmm. And a couple people got on soaps because I helped them with their screen tests. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh, maybe. But when I moved back uh, here from L.A. a couple years after I left the World Turn, um, my husband's area. I went back to college and I got my master's degree. I have a master's in theater history. Mm -hmm. And so uh, part of my assistantship in grad school was that I had to start teaching classes. Um, so I started teaching acting classes and scene study classes, and then I got my degree, and now I teach theater history courses. And I also teach um, uh, a business management class mm -hmm. for people who really want to go into this as a profession, like how to do resumes and how to get a good headshot taken and mm -hmm. how to... Uh, <coughs> to market yourself effectively as an actor and all the different ways you can find to make money mm -hmm. and um and then now i now i also direct i direct a lot of college shows so yeah academia has been nice to me as my children have been young and mm -hmm. i haven't wanted to travel a lot yeah um, now i'm starting now that my kids are a little bit older i'm leaving for florida right after christmas i'll be doing a play down in naples florida yeah i'll be gone for seven weeks yeah oh wow I'm really about that. Yeah. <laughs> So have your uh, uh, place down in New York again, so I get down to the city a lot more now. Yeah. But so you have two daughters, right? I do. Yeah. Um, have they shown any interest in acting? Um, Josie was in a show with me. I, we did uh, the um, professional theater in this area. It was called Capital Repertory Company. Mm -hmm. We did a Christmas Story a couple years ago, which oh, yeah. is based on the movie. It's yeah. a play based on the movie. And uh, I played Ralphie's mom oh. in that. Um, Josie was actually in that show with me. She played one of Ralphie's classmates. You know, oh, she had a small part. Yeah. Just to hang out with me. She's really cool. Uh, I don't think either of them really want to, uh, I think they kind of feel like it's my territory. I don't, I would love for them to do it, but it's not their thing. Yeah. They like being backstage. They both really like being backstage. Hmm. So, Josie might do a stage management internship. This yeah. Her. Well, that would be rather. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, I, you know, I just. And they've got. Job. Just give them the experiences, and then and then they can decide what they like to do. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of um, actor moms and dads are like, I don't want my kids to be in show business. I don't want them acting. But I just want them to do what makes them happy. Right. Yeah. So I don't. Whatever that is is fine with me. Right. Well, as long as they're working hard and happy, then I'm good. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, well, you mentioned Candid Camera earlier. I wanted to know a little bit more about that because you don't often meet someone who was actually a part of that show. <laughs> so what was that like? That had to be kind of a strange experience. Yeah. Uh, it made me realize that I like scripts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have them. It was all improv. We would just be thrown into a circumstance and convince people of this. This is the bit, and you have to make them believe that you are, you know cosmetologist or a video store clerk or whatever it was you had to be that yeah. day. Yeah, so said, go. <laughs> and try to make it funny. But I did get to meet meet and work with a lot of really funny, funny people. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I met Eva LaRue, who ended up on All My Children and then was on CSI Miami. Wow. Eva LaRue was the host with Dom DeLuise at the time. That's when I first met Eva. Mm -hmm. And um, I met Kevin James doing that because Kevin James and I did a couple bits together mm -hmm. and this was long before Kevin movie career so there were a lot of really talented fun actors that this was sort of their first gig yeah really 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 funny comedian named adam ferrara mm -hmm. who i ended up doing a sitcom pilot with in la after i left as the world turns so small world you know, you start running into the same people yeah yeah well it seems like that would be a really good way to kind of get your feet wet you know because if you're having to think yeah. on your feet then yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um I wanted to ask you, uh, I'm sure a lot of your fans probably don't know that you battled breast cancer about five years ago, mm -hmm. um, and I read on your website that you're working on a one-woman show about that. You still? I was. Um, I wrote a lot when I was going through my treatment mm -hmm. because um, I, didn't, I didn't find a lot of um, information about the way that I had to deal with my diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was just my experience with breast cancer was a little bit different than a lot of people normally find it, lumpectomy, um, mm -hmm. radiation, oftentimes as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, but my prognosis was a little bit different, mm -hmm. and I found that there wasn't a lot 
out there. Mm -hmm. So I had to find women that, that, that really were experiencing at a young age what I was going through, mm -hmm. um, which was, you know, my tumor was very, very large and necessitated a double mastectomy, which mm -hmm. is, it was not elective, which is, when they hear about um, Angelina Jolie, who um, elected to because she was BRCA positive. Right. I did not have a genetic link, mm -hmm. um, uh, but I did have cancer. Um, Christina Applegate also did have cancer, right. but choosing to do mastectomy was an aggressive way for her to treat it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, my tumor was so large and would have been so destructive um, that I didn't have a um, option. Mm -hmm. So, um, but also my tumor was really, really dumb. So that means that, you know, um, Christina Applegate, who everyone knows about, she had a really smart tumor. She had a very aggressive cancer, even mm -hmm. though it was small. So that's why she chose to do what she did. Um, so, so I did not have to do chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. I ended up not having to do radiation, although that was a big, big decision mm -hmm. for me. But, um, but my surgeries were and, um, and I used to be, anyone who was a fan of World Turns, <laughs> I used to be pretty large plastic, so. <laughs> my plastic surgeon, I remember him going, you know, what size do you want them to be? I was like, why? What size should they be? And he said, well, most women want them bigger. And I was like, God, no. <laughs> Not <laughs> bigger. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but, but, you know, five surgeries in, in about a year and a half, it was, it was a lot. But, hey, listen. Uh, I met some really fabulous women who were going through exactly what I was going through mm -hmm. at the same time because of my writing. Mm -hmm. And um, through the writing, I, I still get so many um, people that I don't know reach out to me mm -hmm. because they get sent to the blog, which I think is still up on my website. Yeah, I read um, through your blog. I, like, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I don't, I stopped blogging and I don't, and I don't really write on it anymore. And I, I, I leave it there because women tell me it helps them understand what to expect mm -hmm. and because I couldn't find anything like that when I was told what I had to do. Um, that was five years ago. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more out there now. And also, yeah. um, and so I was thinking of doing one woman show because the more I talked about it, the more people would just start laughing and, oh God, you're so funny talking about this. And I'm like, well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> uh, it, it was funny to me to mm -hmm. have such an identity with my breasts and then to have them be taken away. Mm -hmm. but you know what ended up happening, I'll tell you, Paula, I just didn't want to live in that headspace anymore. Yeah. Once I was done with my treatment, uh, that's why I just stopped writing about it, and I just felt like, this isn't the most interesting thing about me, I think. You don't want it to I define hope. you. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I just found that, you know, that was a really difficult emotional time for mm -hmm. me and my family, and I just didn't really want it to be what I was thinking about all the time. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, so, and I also think that there is a lot more information now than there was five years ago. Yeah. So, I'm not sure I have a really new story anymore, mm -hmm. and that's fine. Well, I mean, totally it's, it's really not good for your, um, you know, I guess your sanity to stay in the mindset that you were in when you were going through something traumatic. You know, you yeah. sort of have to be able to move on with your life, and if you're constantly writing about it, I can see where it would be difficult to, you know, get out of that. I mean, I wrote a, my, one of my colleagues was directing a show at one of the area colleges, and it was all about women and body image, mm -hmm. and uh, it's called Devise Theater, and she asked me to write about it, and I wrote, I wrote like a seven minute long monologue mm -hmm. uh, piece based on my experience, mm -hmm. and um, it was, it's been performed several times by several different actors. I have never actually performed it. Yeah. Um, I wrote it, and it's about me, but I sort of handed it off and let other actresses do it, and that's been really cool to see yeah. someone else performing my writing. But I think that that was all I needed to do. Yeah. Have you ever, and I don't know, you may have done a little bit of this, and I just didn't find it in the research, but have you ever thought about, like, uh, writing your own web series or something like that? Not, not necessarily about your breast cancer experience, but about anything? I like to write, but I think I'm a far better editor Mm -hmm. than I am actual writer. Mm -hmm. um, I've corrected a lot of papers at this point. <laughs> I've been teaching for Bing. 13 years. So yeah. I'm good at, and I, I also have read a lot of scripts, and I'm on a committee with Capital Repertory Theater Company. They have a new play festival every year, and 
I tend to be on the selection committee for the new play, so I read plays submitted from across the country. Mm -hmm. I did I did screenplay readings for several years. I, I directed and helped produce them up here. People would say, I, so I've read a lot of screenplays. There's a lot of young writers. I, I don't think this world has a shortage of writers. No. <laughs> and, um, so, and, so there's so many people so much better at it than me. I just let, you just them, let them handle let them it. Do it. And if they ask me for help to tighten something or mm -hmm. fix something or if something doesn't ring true, I'm pretty good at that. Mm -hmm. But I don't need to step on their turf. Yeah. So no, I have. I managed to keep busy enough. Yeah. yeah. Doing what I do. <laughs> Um, let's see, what was I going to ask you? Oh, um, about, oh yeah, as of all terms, getting back to that, there was something I meant to ask you. Um, you were with the show for what, like, it's like six, four years, six years, something like that? Are, are you there? I lost you for yeah. a while because my phone rang. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm phone here. Rang and, uh, my daughter answered it, so oh. I, you were totally gone for a little oh, bit. Oh, okay. Um, uh, getting back to As the World Turns, you were with the show for what, like four years, and then you left and came back, started. I was there on contract for four, then I was gone for a couple, and then I came back for about a year mm -hmm. uh, as a recurring person. So I played Rosanna for a total of five years. Yeah, and then um, and then that character was off the screen until they recast. So was that? Did right. they approach you to come back at that point, or did they just decide to? recast the part yeah um my understanding of the situation was that that chris goutman came on as executive producer mm -hmm. and they didn't they didn't uh send out a casting net to re they, i think he wanted to work with katie mclean again and so he just asked katie to come play her okay i wondered if you know you had been approached and you were you know busy or uh if they just decided no. to go a different direction I think he wanted to work with Katie. Well, so. a lot of people missed you. I, I know for a fact that you had a lot of fans that missed you not being Roseanne. Even at the end, I can't even watch some of those scenes at the end with Carly. I'm so whiny. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted to punch myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people have trouble watching their own stuff, so. Yeah. <laughs> no, I liked Rosanna. Yeah. I liked playing her, and I liked her. And I liked her stuff with Mike. I just uh, it was really hard for me to play some of the stuff with Carly when yeah. she came on because they were just making Rosanna so stupid. Yeah, and it was that happens a lot. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was, it was, you know, if I had to do it again, I would, I would just commit to it. Just, mm -hmm. just commit to it instead of question. I questioned it all the time, and I, I really, really struggled with it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think she did. Rosanna did come off as whiny, and maybe that was Yvonne being whiny because I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy yeah. having to be that stupid. Yeah. Well, your character definitely changed over time from what she was when she first came on the show, and then, yeah. you know, so I guess that was kind of a hard transition. That's fine. I mean, people evolve and change and grow. Mm -hmm. I hope. I hope that I have as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's fine. I don't. I don't mind that she changed a lot. I wish. You know. I wish. I had embraced it a little more, mm -hmm. but it's okay. It all worked out the way it was supposed to work out. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you definitely, you still have a lot of fans. You're a fan favorite. <laughs> I, I know a lot of people really? are, Thank yeah, I, I know so, a lot of people are wondering, you know, how you're doing and, you know, what you're do up to now. So that was one reason I wanted there. to do the, the FaceTime video. I to come to Naples, Florida to the Gulf Shore Playhouse in January and February. I'm doing a world premiere of a new play called The God Game. Okay. I'm really, really excited about it. Really excited about it. Good. So. Okay. Yeah, I have a lot of uh, followers who are from Florida, so maybe they'll okay. be able to make it down to check it out. I guess I'm going to let you go. Um, I've had really okay, so good... Call Jeff Burns and ask him where the episodes are. Yeah. Do you have anything else you want to plug before we go? No, I just want to say thank you okay. to everyone who, yeah. who tunes into anything that I do. I, it's... Uh, really appreciated and I, I I'm very grateful that well, people even remember who I am yeah <laughs> well thank you for taking the time I hope I haven't taken up too much of your time this afternoon that's okay so I'm gonna run great talking with you Paula great talking to you too bye-bye